Good day everybody, we're back for another lesson with Art with Heather Weinberger. We're just going to have some fun today. We are going to be uh, painting this fun beachside boat as promised. So uh, this is what we're going to do today and I'm going to run through some paints that we're going to use today. They're my standard black paints, we use them in the studio, they work really great. We're going to have the um, Mars black, titanium white, pretty much a standard, um, cobalt blue, chrome yellow, bright red, make sure it's not fire red otherwise purples will turn to greys, and light blue. There's a black light blue, there's a Michaels light blue, but this light blue is the magic in this painting today. So I have already set out my tray with my paint colours. Um, I like to use the from the black set that I showed you the other day, large brush, medium brush, a small flat which has a crimp in it and a small round. So those four brushes will do the job. As well as some pencil and chalk. Chalk is great for drawing on paint because that way we can wipe it away afterwards. So we're going to get going and get our horizon line done. That's the first thing that needs to be done when we do any kind of landscape. I'm using my brush as a measuring stick. If you take your small round brush, the average one, we put it at the side of the canvas here. We can see that we're pretty much where the metal ends, whoops, before the bristles begin. Just picking that up. Uh, before the bristles begin, that's about the height of our horizon line. So I'm taking it to my canvas. Sort of give a little line each side. I'm doing my best for a straight line on the canvas. If it's not perfect, that's okay. Paint will cover it later. I'm not that worried about it. This painting is a great practice for double loading because there's a lot of on the, ca on the tray on the brush color mixing in order to give a more natural sort of feel to the sky and the painting. I'm going to start by standing. So we're going to pick up today our blue, a little red, little corner of red and a little corner of white, triple loaded in fact, this we could consider triple loading. Start putting it on our um, canvas letting it mix and mingle on the canvas. It's scary at first, you're not really sure what's going to happen, but just kind of going backwards and forwards a few times. Might pick up a little more white. So here we are, we entered already getting this painting going. And I'm going to have this one in studio as well at towards the end of April, April 30th or so I believe. This one is going to be happening in studio as well if you prefer that a new local. So sort of the top area, just a little wider than say the width of this brush, maybe one and a half brush widths. Notice I haven't worried about an exact horizon line. In nature nothing's going to have a straight line ruled across it, especially the sky. So I'm not too worried about that, but I will have to clean my brush because we're going to swap from blue to red kind of orangey yellows now. So clean off my brush. Now I'm going to pick up some yellow, some red, and a little white again. White just helps blend and mix everything together. Going across my canvas, spreading the paint around first before I decide on anything. Going back with a little extra white, and blending it in below the blue, and even just mixing the top of it into the blue there. If it's a bit too much red, kind of wipe my brush off there, pick up a little more yellow and white. Keep that going there. And just sort of lightly touching on that blue, it's sort of a feather dustery feel on your brush to get those two to sort of blend from one to the other without a very hard line happening. At first the sky's a little darker, then I'm only going to start picking up white and yellow because I've got quite a lot of red going on and we want to sort of lighten up the sky a little bit as we go down. Some yellow, some white going on. Let's pick up a little extra white there to keep that yellow sort of stopping from being too bright a yellow, more of a blended yellow at this point. 
If you want to brighten up anything, you just pick up a little yellow. Now I may pick up a little red, a corner on my brush, some yellow, get a little red streak in there, a little redder area. I'm going to go slowly with the bright red. It's pretty, fairly strong. That was quite bright on the yellow. A little white going on there. Some of the uh, red just comes out naturally off my brush and that's fine. A little more red going on there. And by the time you've gone backwards and forwards on your sky quite a few times, it's sort of blending in. Now the bottom area here, this last finger or two of space, I want more yellow and white going on as it hits the horizon line. As the sky hits into the horizon line there. I will straighten out my horizon line a little more with my brush here. And put in a little line of red here. A little more red going on. So you can always go back before the paint's dry and get it to sort of mix and mingle a little more again if you need to fix things. That is my sky area. If you're wanting to paint around your edges, obviously you can take a minute and do that. I'm going to now rinse my brush because I'm going to move on to the shore and the sea. When we get to the shore, we now, wanna, we now need to draw a shoreline. According to my measurements, if you put three fingers closely together, the sea would end there and a lot of shore there. Right down at the bottom, we're about two fingers two or so fingers from the bottom. Our C comes along and about a third of the way, do a little bit, about a third of the way it kind of dips down a little and then sort of trails off to the edge there. So we've got this sort of dip happening and that's where our boat's going to set in more or less. Roughly about a third of the way along on the canvas. Obviously everyone's landscape can look a little different so that could vary. Now I'm going to sit down so I can be a little lower down here. Clean off my brush and let's get that sea going. Make sure the brush is clean. I'm going to start with a little blue and black. The whole double loading thing again, just be careful with black. It is fairly strong so I'm just taking a little corner compared to the blue and getting that horizon line blocked in. Straight as I can. The blue, the black. You definitely want to see some blue there. If necessary, I'll just pick up a little extra blue here. Go back. Alrighty, now I want to lighten up, so I'm giving my brush a wipe on my paper towel. Get that excess black off there. I'm going to pick up a little blue, little drop of red every so often, and a little white. So blue, red, and white will make purpley blue streaks in this ocean. See, as this bright red mixes in with the blue, you can start getting a purpley color. If you use uh, fire red from that, from the black sort of uh, selection, you'll get this weird gray color coming up. Learned that by better experience. And then I might pick up just a little extra dark blue and white. Not with the yellow in it, as it's just happened. But we could get some nice aqua colours coming out. Happy little accidents, as Bob Ross would say. Can happen too. And then you go, oh, actually I like that, even though I didn't intend for that to happen. Some blue. And then, you know, mix and mingle a little blues, a little purpley colour with the red, blue and white. about two-thirds down my ocean. Give the brush a quick wipe. Now I want to introduce some of the light blue and dark blue together. It's this light blue that kind of gives us lighter feel to the ocean. Make sure you don't have too much dark blue going on. 
the light blue maybe I'll add a little white just to kind of get it going a little better You can always mix it in a little bit here and there. And I might even just want a little drop of purpley colour here and there. I want to leave, I don't want to overwork this ocean. We want to leave with the feeling of waves happening without really making waves. And by doing this double, triple loading, and not overworking it, we can get this, let the brush strokes do the work. Give this just a minute or two to dry up, and then we'll add some bits of white on here um, when it's sort of three quarters, two thirds to three quarter dry. And then that way we get also a suggestion of waves without actually sitting there making each wave. So as I'm talking, it's drying up a little. Let's see how it goes. So I might have like a little wave cut. Don't want too much paint on your brush. Little waves coming in here, little extra white going on. Not too many of them either, just enough to suggest that there's some sort of surf breaking there. Little extra white there. To me that feels like enough, so I am going to clean my brush ready for the beach. The beach is basically an orange color with a little uh, blue added, so I have my second tray available to mix that. I'm going to take myself some yellow. This we will pre-mix, it's just too many colors to take a chance. Yellow, a little red some white which would make the standard orange going on and then a touch of that blue to dull it give it a mix obviously you may have to um, go back and fix things mine's turned out a little greeny I'm just gonna add some more red back in there there I'm thinking that's about it with a little extra white so red, yellow, white and a drop of blue will give you this sort of burnt sienna beach colour. Now you can also take burnt sienna out of a bottle too and a little white and if you want to double load a little red and yellow to give variation you can. Notice I'm wiping my brush here just to get it clean again. And then my beach also isn't just a one note colour. We do some sienna, we can add a little white in there. We can get that beach blocked in. Going along the shore here. Some areas might be a little darker, some might be a little lighter. So just to sort of um, give some variation on our beach, um, we can have a little purple shadow here and there, which is red, blue, red, and a little white, blue, red and white, black colours. Every now and again, oh, not dark enough. Just get some dark areas on our beach there.
maybe a little extra red here and there. Just so there's some variety on our sand. And then we're going to let this dry up for a bit. Right, we've got our background dry now and what I've done is I've actually created a traceable for the boat. This will be available um, on my website very shortly so you'll be able to download PDFs of this or JPEGs I should say of this anytime that you need. Um, and we would uh, then put our boat on at an angle, which is fun, making sure the top just came above the horizon line and the bottom's just a bit below the horizon line. At a fair angle, this boat's kind of leaning quite a bit. I've got my piece of chalk, or you can use pencil. The chalk, or you can see on the darker areas. And I'll see it enough on my lighter areas too. Trace around our image. So this was fun doing the first time, I had to redraw it about five times to get all the angles right, but now that we have this traceable, it is a quick job. Now that I'm drawn out my boat, just fix over here. We're going to paint the entire thing white, so probably all that nice sketching that I did is useless. So, cutting again, I've traced my boat and now I'm going to paint it all in white. Then we'll draw on all the details. Often with the chalk, I'll just paint slightly towards the inside of the chalk line for a lot of it. We need this white base, so when we put the colours on top, they'll come up nice and bright instead of um, showing the underneath colours through. I'm somewhat tracing with my brush as I paint where these various lines are going to be, just to keep an idea of it. And then I'll take my pencil and go over that. And just dry off my boat. Right, I've traced my, I've traced my boat, I've uh, painted it in white, I've got the white paint dry and I'm going to take my pencil. I might as well just look at my trace ball and see about two lines down at the back, two fingers down at the back. Create the back of the boat, the sides coming out towards the, what I believe is the bow of the boat. Round here on these points coming in, swooping in. have the front area of the boat, at least at a 90 degree angle. And these, these traceables will be as a JPEG on my website shortly, that you could just download as needed for these lessons. Okay, we are looking forward to summer with this boat. I'm grabbing my medium brush right now. Some plain blue pla cobalt blue paint. We might as well get that area done so long. Paint that in. Acrylics are interesting, they, a lot of the colours are somewhat transparent compared to oil paints, we've sort of got to work around their quirks. Okay. 
cleaning off my brush. Our next uh, plank is white, so we will need a second layer of white here anyway. And just out of interest, the boat is about four fingers from the left, if you're wondering how far in. Wonder no more. Cleaning off my brush, we're going to get red on the bottom. And I'm going to mix my red with just a little black. You could pre-mix it or you could just take red and a little dot of black on your brush. Put that on there. Load a little more red on my brush. I'll we'll brush a quick wipe for the well, down the middle here, I'm just doing more of a plain red for now, and then I might add a little black at some point to create shadow. Clean off my brush. the back of the boat over here this is where it's sort of we've got these hues going on so I'm going to use dark blue a bit of light blue to begin with we'll put that in the back there and maybe just a speck of black but it's the light blue that kind of gives it the feeling of the light just catching in the back there It may need more than one layer, ultimately. And a little white, light blue, a little white. Never heard to put more white in there. There we go. A little black just to dull those edges a little. Sides are very similar story, some little dark blue, a little light blue, tiny drop of black, white we needed. Little speck of white there. And very similar on the other side, little dark blue, little light blue, little white, and a drop of black, just a dull it. Not really red that mixed in there. That happens. One way of getting rid of that, taking a piece of paper towel, wetting it a little, and then just getting rid of the red we just really don't want there. Because if there's a layer of paint underneath, you can get rid of the top layer really quickly while it's still wet. Light blue, little dark blue, little speck of black. Tiny drop of white. Get the little details done.
might go back and just add a little more to that back because it's the back of that boat that catches the light, that draws the eye in. Then for the floor of the boat, I'm doing more greys and blues. A little more, little more black, a little more white, touch of my dark blue. Fill it in. Ah, who's dreaming of being on the beach? You know, for summer on its way, warm weather. Just a little more black to emphasize those edges. The paint's too wet sometimes, it doesn't like to do it, but... Oh, we're getting it done. A little more light blue in here. You can even end up with a little more white, just at the front of the floor area. We'll let that dry up a little. While that is drying, I'm going to add in some of those little islands, little headlands in the back there. I don't know if that's an island so much as a headland. Up to a finger off and just create your little headland there. Plain black paint, medium brush. You can make it look however you like. And this side a little longer, a little higher, sort of coming down, ending maybe about there. And that just remains plain black paint, keeping it simple in the background there. Our boat's where the real work is. Then we want to add in the shed. Oh, we first got to add in the pole. The boat's um, tied to. Then we'll add in shadows. So about a good four fingers or so away. Just as this headland starting or ending, we add our nice pole here, going to almost about halfway up the ocean area. And we'll have a piece of rope coming down to join the boat. If we go back to our beach color and sort of just add a little more black to an area of it. And maybe a little blue, a little blue and a little black, we can get a darker brown come up. Do our pole. I can even pick up a little extra red and yellow just to brighten that brown a little more. Paint it in. And obviously if you have uh, a uh, umber color brown, you can always use that as well. But that's going to help start our uh, shadowing area, which is more blue. So I'm picking up brown, picking up some blue. And pre-drawing our shadow shape, which kind of comes out from the edge of the boat here. A little bit of an angle, going across and then coming all the way back to this uh, bow of the boat. So it's sort of like a, uh, looks like a cup at an angle, I guess. And we're gonna paint all that in, a little less blue, a little more of the brown. Maybe take a little of my dark brown too. Paint all that shadow in. You don't want too heavy a paint. You can even put a little extra water there so that you get at least something that's semi-transparent because the important part with shadows is often Except where there's heavy shadow near an object, the shadow starts to become a little transparent and you can somewhat see what's underneath there. It's allowed to show through.
around my birth chair. I sort of gave it a little bit of wave, slight wavy lines because maybe there's some lumps and bumps on the beach for all we know. And of course our pole, our wooden pole needs a bit of a shadow as well from some of that dark brown just coming out to the left there. Once we start shadows to the left, we've got to kind of keep them to the left. I'm adding just a little extra blue here and there. There we go. And the rope is more of a sort of a, that light brown, red and white sort of feel to it. Almost sort of a pinky hue to it. Ties around the pole, maybe a little extra white there just to make it show off. Little back, little rope hanging down there. That will be our boat, our uh, rope. Also, just where the waves sort of hit the beach here, we want to add just a little bit of darker brown because the sand would be wet there from the waves coming in and out, so making it a little more realistic. You can just test to see how dark you need it to go. Just sort of soften that line there once I've put it in. I'm putting it in with some heavier paint. And then going back with less paint on my brush and kind of softening that line a little. And if you need a little extra blue or black just to deepen it, that's okay. Painting is very much about contrast. That's what uh, starts to make bring things to life. Then I'm going to use my small flat brush, or you could use your small round brush. To make contrast around the edge of the boat, we need a lighter lip area and then a darker sort of shadow area and some white, some light blue, let's just see white, light blue and touch of dark blue there, but mostly white, just to create an edge, you want to go, oh yellow got on the brush, I'm not sure. I think my tray is very full of colours. Got to be careful. Carefully doing around this boat. So we get that lighter lip. And then also with my smaller brush, the white here may have a little shadow on it. So I'm taking a little blue on my little brush, then some white that I can sort of blend it in here a bit. To create, and it might have a bit of shadow there as well, just to give it a little feel of depth there. Maybe a little extra red, make it a more slightly purpley shadow.
There we go. And here as well, maybe just where there's a little more shadow. A little extra blue going on there. So you kind of put your shadow color, then you add a little extra white so that you can get the two sort of blending with each other. And the blue paint as well on my boat, um, I'm going to do a second layer on it just to give it a little more depth that's a little thin. Because we really want to bring that boat forward to be the centerpiece. The blue is just a little thin still. clean off my brush and then on the red areas while well, it's dark here at the bottom we just want a little red of hue go hue of red going on not a red of hue hue of red so I'm adding just a little extra red on top somehow that just gives that extra depth to that dark red and where the front of the boat is we just need to have a darker red shadow on the left bring that forward a little bit Wipe my brush and then adding a bit another layer of red here. And that way with two layers on that boat, that just brings that whole bow of the boat forward. And the last detail for the boat, a little blue, we need to create, where we've got the lip of the boat, we want to create a little edging, a little dark blue edging here. I'm doing it on top. I'm wondering if I've got a little black in my blue because it seems to be a deeper one, so I'm adding a touch of black. Oh, too much black going on there. No, it's too dark. Let that all blend in there. I might just go with a little extra blue here. The nice thing is if you mess up a little you can always go back and put the white back in, the light blue back in. Which is what I might do, I might just add a little extra light blue here. And last but not least, a few little birds. 
in our horizon there, on our, in our sky there. Make sure my brush is dry, otherwise water will drip in. That traditional, just a little V bird, we've got three of them going on, you could have more, you could have less. Then we let that dry up and um, then we can sort of erase the extra chalk with wet paper towel once the paint is dry. So that brings us to the end of our painting session today. Uh, thank you for joining me. We're going to have, I hope you have some fun making your own boat. Like I said, if you need the trace for so long, you can always message me, which a few people have. Otherwise, it'll be available shortly on my website. Thank you everybody for joining me and have some fun painting. And the painting, as I mentioned earlier, should be, I think it's around the 30th of April, at the end of April, we'll actually have the class um, in the studio for that. You can check the calendar on the website. Monet your way. Thank you.